You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is drawing free body diagrams. The question we wish to answer is, how do you draw a free body diagram to represent the relative strength and direction of the individual forces acting upon an object? Before we start drawing free body diagrams, let's ask the question, what is a free body diagram? You see one right up here. That free body diagram has four arrows on it, and each one of the arrows represents a force that acts upon the object. You'll notice that the arrows have a specific direction. One is up, one is down, one is right, and one is left. You'll notice that each arrow has a label on it. The label indicates the type of force that acts upon the object. So an F grav symbol means there's a gravity force. An F norm symbol means there's a normal force. And finally, you'll notice the arrows have a specific length. That's no accident. Longer arrows represent stronger forces. So if the applied force is longer than the friction force, we would say it's a stronger force. That's what a free body diagram is. You might recall that the previous slide showed various arrows acting up on the object and each arrow was representative of a type of force. If you're not familiar with types of forces, then you might want to watch the previous video in this series called Recognizing Types of Forces. I'm going to do a very, very brief description here. It really is worth a more thorough description, but we included that in a previous video. So let's begin with the force of gravity, or F grab. That's the force of the Earth pulling on an object. It's always present. It's always down. Then there's the force of tension, or F tense. That's the force that is acting on an object due to the presence of a string, rope, wire, cable that's connected to the object. Then there's a force of a spring, or F spring. That's simply the force from a compressed or stretched spring that touches the object. Then there's the friction force. That's when two surfaces slide across each other. Then there's the air resistance force, which acts upon objects that are moving, moving through surrounding air. And then there's the normal force, and the normal force results from two surfaces pressing against each other. And then finally, there's an applied force, a force of a person pushing or pulling on an object. Sometimes this is also called a normal force. These are the types of forces. You need to be familiar with the types of forces in order to draw a free body diagram. One of the first steps to drawing a free body diagram is to identify the types of forces that are acting upon an object and their direction. So the first thing you want to ask is you want to ask, are there any planets, magnets, or charges nearby? Now that indicates whether or not there's going to be a non-contact force such as gravity, electrical, or magnetic. In this particular video, we're just going to focus on gravity and objects around the Earth. So yes, there's a planet nearby. There will always be a gravity force. It will always be down. The next question you ask, is there anything touching our object in question? If there's something touching it, it's going to put a force on it. It might be a table touching it, putting a normal force, or a wire touching it, putting on a tension force. But you have to ask this question in order to determine whether or not there are, non, whether or not there are contact forces acting upon the object. Now, once you determine the types of forces and their direction, your next step is to draw an arrow on your object, usually represented by a box, in the direction of the force. Then give the arrow a label according to its type, like if the down force is gravity, you give it the label F grab. Then finally you have to size the arrows according to the, their relative strength, relative to oppositely directed forces. So if the rightward force is stronger than the leftward force, you have to represent it by a longer arrow. Longer arrows represent stronger forces. Now here's our first example. Draw the free body diagram for a book that's at rest on a table. So the first question we ask is what forces are present in what direction? So first of all, there's the non-contact force of gravity. Gravity acts downwards upon the book. But the second force that acts upon the book is the normal force. The book's touching a table, and they're pressed together, the book and the table. So the table presses up on the book with a type of force called a normal force. So we're going to draw a diagram with two arrows. So we get ourselves a box, and from the center of the box, we put two arrows on it. One down, that's the gravity force, and one up, that's the normal force. Since this object's at rest, these two forces are going to balance each other. At rest objects will have balanced forces, and thus the arrows will be of the same length for same strength forces. In example two, we wish to draw the free body diagram for a book is attached to a string and hanging from the ceiling. So we have to ask first, what are the forces presently acting up on the book? 
and of course gravity is always present, it's down, and then the other force is the force of the string. The book's touching a string, and strings exert tension forces. That's an up force. So because there's two forces, I have to draw two arrows in my free body diagram. I'm going to draw a down arrow, a label it F grav, and an up arrow, and label it F tension. Now because this book's at rest, or at least stationary, we can say that the up and the down forces balance, and they're going to be of the same strength and drawn to the same length. Example 3 is a bit more complicated. We wish to draw the free body diagram for a person who's pushing a crate to the right across the floor at a constant speed. So the first question again is what forces are present? Of course there's gravity and it goes down. Then we ask what is the object touching? What's the crate touching? Now, obviously it's touching the floor. So the floor pushes up on the book. That's what we call a normal force. So now that we have the down and up, let's think right and left. We're told that the person is pushing the crate to the right. Now that force can be called one of two things. Some people like to call it a normal force also. Other people would call it an applied force. It really doesn't matter what you call it. What matters is that you count for it when you identify the forces present. I'm going to call it an applied force. It's to the right. And since the crate is being uh, uh, is rubbing across the floor as it slides to the right, there's a friction force, and that's directed left. That always opposes the motion of the object. So when we draw the free body diagram, we draw four arrows. There they are. And since this object's moving at constant speed, oppositely directed forces will be of the same length. So I've drawn the applied and the friction to the same length. I've drawn the gravity and the normal to the same length. Example 4 is our first case of an acceleration. We're told a skydiver is falling downwards and speeding up. We want to draw the free body diagram on the skydiver. So we ask what forces are present on the skydiver. And the first one's the non-contact earth non-contact force. The earth pulls down on the skydiver. That's gravity. The other force is the force of air resistance acting upward up on the skydiver. With these two forces, we're going to draw a free body diagram with two arrows. The gravity force down, the air resistance up. Now, the skydiver is accelerating, and it's accelerating downwards. So we make the downward force bigger than the upwards force. Not because it's moving downwards, but because it's accelerating downwards. Object moving downwards and speeding up up, have a downwards acceleration. So the down arrow is longer than the up arrow. Example 5 also involves acceleration. A rightward moving car has locked wheels and is skidding to a stop. So when we ask what forces are present, we naturally say gravity is down. And then we say that there's a normal force up because the car is on the road surface pressed against the road. And then finally there's friction to the left. And that's due to two surfaces sliding across each other. With the locked wheels, a car's just skidding across the road surface. That's a friction force. And there's no forward force, no rightward force, because the wheels aren't spinning. It's just skidding to a stop. So with three forces, I put three arrows on my diagram. The up and the down are balanced, and the friction force is the unbalanced force causing this leftward acceleration. Our last example is, a freight elevator is attached by a cable being pulled upwards and slowing down. It's not touching the sides of the elevator shaft. So when I ask what forces are present on the object, there's gravity down, and then there's a, a cable attached to the elevator pulling it up. So those are the only two forces, gravity down, tension up. Now when I go to draw the force diagram, I'm going to put two arrows on it. And I'm going to size the gravity arrow to be bigger than the tension arrow. And that's because the object's accelerating downwards. An upward moving object that's slowing down must have more down force than up force. That's the only way to slow down that upward moving object. So I make the arrow down of a longer arrow than the arrow up. So to summarize, the task of drawing a free body diagram involves four basic steps. First of all, you have to determine which forces are present on the object, and second, which direction those forces act. Third, you have to determine the relative size of one force relative to its opposing force. Once done, you can draw your diagram. You put an arrow for every force, you give it a labeled type, you put it in the right direction, and you size it such that stronger forces are represented by longer length arrows. Now I'd like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making this learning stick. But before I help you out with that, I was wondering if you could help us out. If you enjoyed the video, could you tap on the like button or maybe even the subscribe button and then get notifications when new videos come out. Finally, we have a place where you can leave comments and questions. Now for the action plan. First, I like to recommend two things. The first thing is match that free body diagram, a concept builder at our website. 
Alternatively, you could try our free body diagram interactive on our website or do them both. We have links to both of these resources in the description section down below this video. Finally, if you ever need a reference, our tutorial is the place to go. We have a, a, a Newton's Laws chapter, and then we have Lesson 2, a page called Drawing Free Body Diagrams, a perfect follow-up to this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck.